This is Space Cats Peace Turtles, the unofficial podcast for Fantasy Flight's Twilight Imperium. Episode 102. Can it Rex? Music by Ben Prunty, featuring Matt Martins and Hunter Donaldson. Well, let me tell you this much, Sonny Jim. I did hours of traveling yesterday and four hours of podcast recording already. And then I worked, and now I'm feeding my roommate's cat, Marla, who is hey, not the nicest cat in the world. Hey, what? I miss you. Miss you too. Wasn't it fun <laughs> recording together in the same room? Didn't we get such a fun crackly energy we got out a of fun, it? It's it was a it was a new a, a rebirth of that SCPT energy, and then we had a big a big wedding we went to, mm-hmm. and we just we friended the weekend away. We friended yeah. it out. We friended hardcore. Um, it's nice if uh, if if you guys really enjoyed last week's episode when we were in the same place. Um, December is right around the corner, Yay! and there will be more than a f- more than a couple uh, episodes yeah. of us reunited. I'm going to try and make uh, make it back for the holidays for an extended stay, uh, so we can get so we can do some SCPT work. Not for you know my family and Christmas no, and stuff. No, it's absolutely shouldn't be staying with them. Only live, for the show. They live eight minutes away from me, and yet it will be like they are a hundred light years away. Right. They couldn't be farther away, <laughs> no matter how close they find themselves. Uh, so today, what we got? What you got well, for me today? We should say off the top, before we even start diving into things, what next week's episode oh, yes. is. Because we do this thing now uh, where uh, when we're going to do a new faction guide, we put the call out. And mm-hmm. so that's what we're going to do. We're going to put the call out next week. Is supposed to be the Barony Aletnev guide. I definitely still need to get a game in, uh, so we're hoping to play. I think this weekend, but but after this weekend, we'll be playing and recording our Barony Aletnev guide. Which means if you want to get your tips and tricks and ideas and thoughts out there, tips and tricks about the Barony Aletnev, uh, hit us up on the Discord. We will have a separate channel set up for you to send messages. If you uh, post a comment in this week's Reddit thread uh, that's about Barony Aletnev, just make sure you say that at the top, and we will we will make sure that those notes all get included in our pre-errata for Barony Aletnev. So get excited. Freak out for that, uh, yeah. because send I'm us, pretty excited to do a, a Aletnev guy. Send us your hot takes. I want to hear yeah. I want to hear them. I want to hear your weird your weird Aletnev ideas, your challenging Aletnev ideas, just the things that you... That you want to see in a Let yeah. guy, but I want to well, see that at, stuff. And as our first round guide showed, there's a, a lot of ways to skin this elf, uh, and so <laughs> I think Ooh. that we're gonna get a lot. I'm gonna of need pre-errata. another take on that one. I'm gonna <laughs> need you to rewind the tape on that. There's there's, a, there's two ways to skin this potato. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. I don't even like the original. I don't even like the original uh, phrase, phrase that you're that you're quoting from at all. What a horrible thing cat. to! Th- oh God, horrible no! Don't say that. Do. Yeah. <laughs> Although, what I guess I am pretty mad at my roommate's cat right now, Marla. <laughs> so maybe it, maybe it is kind of comforting in a weird way. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to do the Barony Guide. Um, I think they are definitely one of the factions that when we were doing our first round guides, they kind of. They kind of inspired us a lot, I would say, yeah. to yeah. kind of they up our game. S- right. They stumped us, and in stumping us, made us push a lot harder to... Uh, that was, I think, our first guide where we really were like playing lots of games to, mm-hmm. to figure it out. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that's the first one, at least I remember, just being like, ah, how do I wrap my head around this? And I've been feeling that way this time as well. So yeah, yeah. lots lots more work to do, uh, but looking, looking forward to hearing what everybody has to say. Yeah. Also, I mean, Matt just said that he'll be trying to play a game on Saturday. I will probably also be trying to play a game on Saturday. Um, so those of you in the Patreon, look out. Yeah. We'll be hitting you up and trying to get one or two games together, especially yes. you good yin brotherhooders. Let's brotherhooders do today's episode. <laughs> right. uh, I feel like we're still, despite the kind of like other special episodes we've had the past couple of days, I feel like we're still in post 
Federation of Soul Guide mode, which is like we set a bunch of things in the Soul Guide, and some people are like, wow, they went really gung-ho on the Mechatol Rex thing or on the this thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we've we've done a couple of episodes now that are sort of like responses to just that conversation being what started. And I think today's episode is a is a perfect sort of finale on that soul line of thinking because today the Galactic Council, one of our Patreon tiers, $5 a month, they voted on Can It Rex, which is to say we recently did an episode called Can It War Sun where we just looked at every faction and said, should they, can they, will they? And we're going to do the same thing today except for with the planet that's in the center of every galaxy ever. Mm-hmm. Mac, uh, Macatol. <laughs> Ma- Macatol Rarks. Yeah, we know all about it, Macatol Rarks. <laughs> that is not what I was going to say. I was going to say Camelot Rex. Camelot Rex. Yeah. Uh, so I think before we like dig into every faction and kind of suss out what we feel about their their ability to Macatol or, or whether or not they should, mm-hmm. uh, I think we need to talk a little bit first of even just why and how. Uh, all of this should happen with with any faction. So, um, Hunter, why do we care about Mechatol Rex? What's even the point? Oh, the point you ask. Um, uh-huh. the, well, the point the the point is the points, my friend. The points are what we're playing for. Imaginary. Uh, they're just points, and if you get enough, you win the game. Sometimes it's ten. Sometimes it's fourteen. Um, Mechatol Rex gets you points. What's great about Mechatol Rex points, and we have yet to coin a term to describe this idea. Yeah. But I feel like it's something that we kind of need a term for. I don't know. I, I don't know what to call it. But Mechatol Rex points are special in that they are points you kind of get outside of the kind of horse race yeah. that is the rest of the game. There is a lot of uh, commonalities that people have as far as the amount of points that they can score. You can always score all of the public objectives, obviously, but you're also limited in that you each get three secret objectives that you can each score as players, and you also are going to traditionally get one support for the throne point from another player. Um, yeah. So all those are points that everybody has in common. What's interesting about the custodian point and Mechatol Rex points in general is they are something that you get outside of that system, and they are asymmetrical. You, you get yeah. a point... No one else can get that custodian point you just got. They have to go right. get one next round. Right. Um, yeah, it, it shares that in common with basically Imperial Riders and some agendas. And those yes. are those are those kind of like non-objective or not, yeah, like outside the horse race. Not the, That's what we'll call them, the non-horse points. The non-horse points. We just did it. We <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so out, the, the points are, are a huge deal and, and why you should care about it. Uh, because like, like Hunter's saying, it's, it's outside of the horse race. It's the, the reason you want points outside of the horse race is because it speeds you up a lot. So rather than relying on some stage two objective that you hope just comes out, if you can score the stage ones and all three of your secrets and get a custodian's point, you are one point ahead of everyone else. You don't have to worry about this, you know, these other things. If you can get an Imperial point on top of that, you don't even need a stage two objective at all. Whereas everybody else does because they didn't get... The mech, they didn't get the custodians points. Like they're not getting those points that you're getting. Yeah. So I, I would you, say it gives it, you a distinct advantage. Yeah. And I would say uh, getting yourself into that situation where you can win the game without having to score any stage twos, that is very important. And I feel like we see way more games end like that. I would yeah. imagine if we took all the stage two objectives, that some of them almost never get scored, um, right. at least in a 10 point game. 14 point is different. Yeah. But in 10 point games, I feel like you don't see people score the really tough um, stage twos. I'm yeah. thinking like the tech specialty one. Yeah. Has anyone I ever scored say, that ever? Right. Even in a even in a 14 point game, uh, though, too, these custodian points are almost even more important. Oh, there's yeah. More, that's there's a good more point, rounds actually. to score them. And so now, whereas some people have to do two. Uh, maybe even three stage two objectives. You don't have to do as many. Like the the the, the less stage twos you can make yourself have to get, the better. That mm-hmm. that's just straight up and down going to win you more games if you don't have to rely on stage two objectives. Right. No matter how many of them there are in a ten point game. Yeah, you see one or two in a fourteen point game. You see three or four maybe. Uh, maybe you see all five, but like you still want to avoid having to try to score them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so these Mechatorex points are 
are clutch. But yeah. that's not all they do. That's not all Mechatol Rex is good for. Right, right. Mechatol Rex is also two free command counters every single time leadership is played. Two free actions. More actions means you get to do more stuff. Being in the center of the map means you get to do more stuff and have access to more things. So it's really just a great spot to be in uh, if you want to accomplish other objectives and do other things all around the table. You have the ability to do more stuff and access to more stuff. So there's like right. almost no argument to being in the center of the table except for ooh I don't want to look like the target anymore but beyond that like having the range and the access to all that is is a pretty important thing in TI as well cuz even if you're not even if you never score a single point from Mechatol Rex it doesn't hurt to be there cuz a you're blocking somebody else from getting Mechatol points and you have that access you have that ability i mean if you have gravity drive you can reach the entire two rings around the center uh, from anywhere on you know from being on Mechatol, all your ships there can get you know adjacent to home systems or where, wherever you need to be mm-hmm. you can go mm-hmm. pretty much anywhere um i'll never forget uh that time we saw gen con joey uh do that weird sar play where he was on Mechatol rex and had like light wave and he was sending his space docks could travel to every home system right. in the game because he was on Mechatol Rex. And because of the special weird qualities of SAR space docks where they're basically like stealth bombers, uh, we were going insane trying to comp- like, figure, like, figure out what, out he, what he was going to do. <laughs> and I mean, I think that's just like a perfect example of the kinds of plays that being on Mechatol Rex can open you up to. Yeah. Um, coming from just one side of the hexagon uh, is very kind of limiting, but being right. in the middle, there's so many places you could find yourself uh, having right. access to at a clutch moment. I mean, a lot of times people get to Mechatol Rex and then like everybody kind of dogpiles in the neighboring, you know, their their home slice uh, right. hex that's like right next to Mechatol. And yeah, I mean, that, that will happen and that'll be hard, but who knows what's going to happen? Um, who right. knows what might open up? Yeah, it's it's just important to be there for timing attacks and all, all kinds of those things. Mm-hmm. But let's let's transition then into there's sort of two different conversations we have to have when we talk about Mechatol Rex because there's two different ways to care about Mechatol Rex because mm-hmm. uh, the custodian's point is one thing, but then having Imperial while you hold Mechatol Rex is kind of an entirely different thing right. in some regards. So. We have to talk about, with some factions, how do you get there first, and we have to talk about, with some factions, how do you keep it. So, what are the secrets? It's, it's funny that we did the Soul Guide. All these things should be fresh on your memory, but what are the... How do you get there first? What's the key to being the first one to Mechatol Rex? Yeah, well, you're going to need to start with Blue Tech, for sure. Um, ideally, you have a route to Gravity Drive, or you just start with it, essentially. Yep. Um because that, I mean, yeah, that's that's how you do it. That's how you get there before anybody else. Um, yeah. what, what else do you need, Matt? What, well, else, need... what else does the soul have? <laughs> what else does the soul have? Uh, the, the big thing f- for me is these aren't uh, crucial, but having two starting carriers in your opening fleet is important. With almost any faction, if you want to be the first one there, you're planning to get there round two. It's, mm-hmm. it's almost impossible to get there round one, and when it is, you're probably sacrificing too much for it to be worth it. Right, right. So and we, we, always... and we have a term for that already. It's called Magic Christmas Land. Magic Christmas Land scenarios don't help us here. So we want to think about round two, which means Gravity Drive helps, helps us move either too closer to be adjacent to Mechatol Rex, uh, in round two, or we're two spaces away, and then in round two, we're able to easily hop, skip, and jump over to Mechatol Rex. So that's what the blue tech is important for. Mm-hmm. But I like having the two carriers as well because it's not especially beneficial to send your only fleet directly to Mechatol and have nothing else behind. Of course. Uh, so you need either the production capacity to build a lot more stuff back at home and fill out the rest of your slice. If you only have your home system and Mechatol Rex in round two, it doesn't. It's not great. It doesn't feel very good. Um, so it's. It is certainly a benefit to have two carriers or two carrying capacity ships. Sure, sure. Um, and then of course, obviously, you need six expendable influence uh, mm-hmm. to be able. You to gotta take have the money. Rest. You gotta have the gotta economy have, to do it. Gotta have the economy to do it. So the planets that you take on the way need to be contributing to that. Maybe your home system has a planet that has good influence. There's a few different kind of ways to get it. Or maybe you have access to trade goods easily. 
Um, we're kind of excluding just the idea of like, oh, I took trade first. But like there's factions like Mentak and Sar that have these other ways to acquire trade goods. And that usually helps them deal with Mechatol Rex's cost mm-hmm. to invade. Mm-hmm. Um, so getting that six influence can actually be a, a problem. There, there, you know, I've been in games where I wanted to go to Mechatol first, but my slice was, you know, Abyss Freya on the way. So me going there meant I didn't pick up any influence on the way, which means, oh, I, even if I went there, I would not be able to take the planet. So what's the point? Right. So you do need like the right path to Mechatol. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the, I mean, obviously... Taking these three uh, kind of criteria, you can see like what factions kind of fit this and what factions really don't. Um, yeah. Some factions have one of these figured out really well. I mean, I, I, I'm thinking of Ghost of Krius, right? Um, with the blue tech literally starting with gravity drive and just the ability to basically get wherever they want to go. Mechatol's always like, okay, I could go there. I could get there, yeah. But, but I think the where they really struggle is those other two factors, basically. Yeah, um, yeah it's and, hard for them to get the right influence, or it's very hard for them to get like the correct amount of carriers where they need it to fill out the slice in the way that they want. Right, right. And I would say, the the just, just for thinking about its sake, um, I would expand the two starting carrier point to just straight up 2C4I, because we're going to need yeah. a healthy, we're going to need a healthy uh, supply of, you know, ground ground dudes, ground boys, ground right. men. However, ground <laughs> ground daddies, if you will, uh, in order to make this possible, basically. Yeah. So that's one path, and that's one way to get a free point. Um, but there's plenty of factions where you're kind of your only goal is to like get a carrier and a dude to to make a tall rex to get mm-hmm. that custodian's point, and then you're kind of like, and then I sacrifice them to the winds. I don't care. I right. just wanted that, and then I'm gonna bail. But we've got all these other factions that actually have some interest in taking and holding. Mechatol Rex. Maybe not first, but there's plenty of factions that want to eventually get to Mechatol right. and are planning to stick around. Right. Uh, um, can, so can I stop you real quick? I just want I just want to ask your opinion on something though, just right before we get into this next point. Yeah. I just want to say, what do you what do you think about like when people do that? When people literally send the carrier and the one infantry to get the custodian point? Because I actually feel like that is that's a, a costly point. I feel like it's that's a costly. really expensive point. I think the goal is always to be able to retreat the carrier out when someone attacks. You don't sure. want to lose the carrier. Right. So hopefully, and, and if anything, too, depending on who's at the table, it can be not that bad because sometimes people don't have a ton to bring in later. So you'll be able to move the carrier out later. Mm-hmm. Um, but when it's like, oh, Clan Asar is coming, I'm going to send my carrier and one ground force in. Right. Well, Clan Asar is easily going to wipe out all of that. So you definitely, it definitely costs you three and a half resources to take a point. Well, that's still kind of a cheap point, even though it's your starting care. It's like an early carrier, and that feels costly, right? Yeah. Like it doesn't. That, it's not good to lose a carrier in round two. It's never good to lose a carrier round two. Yeah. But I would say I would still. There's plenty of situations where I would do it, uh, just because I I want to block the point. Uh, it's one of those points that nobody else can get. So right. Maybe it's it depends on what you can back it up with. If you don't have a good economy and you can't build another carrier right away and you're sacking like your only carrier, that's not a good position to be in. Mm -hmm. But if you've already built another one, you had a second one behind, it's okay to lose one. You know, if if it's my third carrier and I'm losing it, I'm not going to, you know, whine about it. But if it's my Winu only carrier and I haven't been able to afford to build another one yet and I'm losing that carrier, I'm going to feel sad that I I spent all of that just on a custodian point. Yeah, see, I don't know. I I feel like... I'm totally down to sneak the point. Like if I'm looking yeah. at the board and reading it right and I'm like, okay, I can get in there, get the point and get out reliably. But when it, when I see people just straight up like I'm I'm just going to throw away this carrier to steal it. Sometimes I feel like they like I feel like that early game loss of a carrier depending on the faction we're talking about. Um I feel like I've seen people make that trade and kind of have like a rough early game. Yeah. Like yeah, they Maybe. got the custodian point, but you don't want to give up too much if that i think if that carrier is kind of crucial for you in the early game then maybe not so much but if you're like i don't know if you're like playing a sakan or something if you're if you're just kind of rolling in money and it's like yeah whatever i threw the carrier away it's not a big deal it it very much depends on what you're leaving behind too if you were gunning for mechatol and you saw that you're in a race with someone else and they're bringing more stuff but you're gonna have the higher initiative order i don't think it hurts to do it but not take everything because the last thing you want is to move 
all of your stuff from like an adjacent in your pie slice system into Mechatol and then have one of your neighbors take that from you, right? right you don't want right. to lose your planet. So sometimes that's why I see people just take the carrier because they've got a few ground forces and the cruiser behind. They're like, well, I want to leave that there to defend my slice and I just want the point, but I don't want to, you know, so is it is it worth it to keep part of my slice and lose the carrier and get the point or do I want to send in all my stuff, not lose the units, get the point, but lose my position? Yeah, that's sort of the judgment call you have to make depending on your map. Yeah, man, I'm already I'm already seeing this episode. Uh, this Balloon. subject can be <laughs> we could go in every single direction at once. It turns out Mechatol Rex is kind of the point of the game. It's kind of the game. Um, uh, so <laughs> let's just move on. Let's move forward to we were about to get to a point about how how does someone take Mechatol and keep it yeah. and hold on to it. So there's a couple ideas of just like the the main ways to reliably keep and hold Mechatol. The first one, and I would say almost the well, let's let's start with the most reliable ground forces. Lots of them. Oh man, if you put a ton of ground forces there, no one's gonna come mess with you for a right, while. Right, right. Yeah, but, I mean, uh, uh, except for X eighty nine, right? Except for X eighty nine. So oh man, X eighty nine. I can it's do gonna that. get you. Uh, it's not. So <laughs> the other option is if you know you have a reliable way to get like a space dock and a PDS there or two PDS there, that helps. It's mm -hmm. not that's not gonna save your life, but it's gonna it's gonna help uh the the general idea. You know, you can you can survive with two PDS and two ground forces on Mechatol. That's a pretty big deterrent sure. uh, for people to try to invade. Um the last one and I think the the least helpful and this is probably what will maybe be a point of contention for some people is you can have a big scary fleet parked above Mechatol Rex. Mm-hmm um but in my view a big scary fleet there's always ways to deal with big scary fleets and yeah. and more importantly if you're parking a big scary fleet above mechatol rex that big scary fleet isn't out accomplishing other things and mechatol rex is great for getting those points but if you're not also scoring objectives on top of that you're you're not getting any closer in the horse race the the, the mechatol points are not meant to fully replace the horse race they're there to supplement the horse race and and speed you up right so your big fleet just parked above mechatol doesn't really do you any favors in the rest of the board game yeah i think there's also if your main way of defending mechatol is big scary fleet um that is easier for the other players to coordinate in dogpiling on yep, you absolutely whereas what's beautiful about defending mechatol rex with infantry is the logistics of removing you if you're yeah. doing it right will be a challenge for the table, yep, um, absolutely. hopefully. Now, I mean, sometimes it won't. <laughs> sometimes they're the right faction or they've got the right flagship or what you know, what have you, um, or they've got the right action card even. Um, right. But uh, I think in general, if we're, if we're kind of ignoring all of those factors, it can just be difficult to be like, all right, I'm going to send my guys in and try and, but while well, he's got PDS, all right, so I'm going to send those guys in. Right. And then, oh, man, you didn't quite do it well. I mean, we are all on the same team, but I am going to have to destroy your fleet now right, to try right. and get at them. <laughs> I love those moments are so yeah. great. And it just yeah. feels a lot more solid. Uh, I would say also from the first point um, about keeping, you know, you need a space stock and a PDS. I would kind of triple underline PDS in that. Yes, absolutely. In that relationship. The, the, P space the PDS stock is, is an really interesting... important. Yeah, the PDS is important. And, and it's mostly because the space stock is sort of an interesting problem with mechatol is it's a one six it's one resource which mm -hmm. means for your production capacity is only three so the mecha the, the the space stock helps a little bit but you're you're barely getting stuff out there you know the, your general build on mechatol rex out of a space stock is two ground forces and a ship mm -hmm. of some kind right um so it's never really very efficient uh yeah you could upgrade your space stocks with certain factions that are going down yellow um but that still only bumps it up to five and it's just it's never the strongest thing but it's the best way to get more ground forces there uh, for, for most, most factions. factions. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so obviously there will be some that can supplant that. But if you're really planning to hold Mechatol, you probably need to get the space stock there because you're going to want to keep putting a few more ground forces there. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. But the PDS, like Hunter's saying, that's really the clutch part that can truly help defend you. you know, right. PDS and a plasma scoring, uh, you know, three shots and invading ground forces, that's... That's a pretty big deterrent. That's huge. And them not being able to bombard you, except yep. for a couple cases. Right. Uh, I think that is... that Because I think the most obvious way to get rid of a lot of the factions we're going to talk about that are good at um, taking Mechatol 
uh, yeah. is to use bombardment essentially. Yeah. And taking that out of the equation is just, it's just a really clean, elegant way to, to take Mechatol and be like, all right, this is mine and I'm setting up shop. Well, Hunter, I feel like it's time. We have this problem on this show where every time we want to talk about specific stuff, we have to talk about 17 individual things. Sure, 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 sure. <laughs> so now is the time where we talk about 17 individual things. Yeah. It's time uh, for the just raw <laughs> list. We're going to talk about all 17 of them. This is why you guys asked us to do this is because you <laughs> wanted us to have to talk about the entire game essentially in one episode. So but we're going to we go. try to we're going to try to do this fast. Again, it's really hard to talk about this without talking about the entire board game, but we're really going to Here's what we're going to do. We're going to try to answer two questions with every single faction as quickly and simply as we can so that we keep this fairly basic for people to to understand. Because really, every game comes down to the circumstances, right? There's there's a billion things to think about, and there's no tried and true, got to do this, except for Federation of Soul, yes, go do Mechatol Rex. Everybody else is like, well, I don't know. Right. So the two questions we're going to answer with every single faction are, should they go to Mechatol Rex? And... Can they go to Mechatol Rex? Right. Yeah, we've kind of taken the the core idea of the episode and expanded it a little bit. Yeah. Because it was driving us crazy to try and just it's say It's driving us crazy. Yes and if or anything, no. I think it's even better, Hunter. Can you define a little bit even what those two questions really, really mean? Should, right. Should right. they is is fairly easy, but has some complexity to well, it. Can so, they is very complex. So so should they will essentially never be well never gonna say no, because Mechatol is just yeah. that important right. um, that basically if like, let's say you're playing literally any faction and you're in a game where the other five players are just like having a rough game or they're just inept or something, you should just, you should take it. Like if, if it's just available to you, if for some reason it's just served to you on a silver platter, you yeah. should always take it. Um, it's, 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 it's points, baby. You got to right. get them. Free, you got to get free points. <laughs> um, but to get more, to get deeper with it, I think the should is more like taking into account this faction's like kind of general position. Yeah. Um, maybe like there are some factions that, you know, get a, a lot of uh, advantages and some that don't get quite so many. So I right. feel like when we say should they, it's either because, well, you, you could really use it. You really need this uh, in, like, you know, in your toolkit or, it's the other way where the should yes is like, well, you're so good at taking yeah, it. Right. You, you can just, capitalize of on course it so you much. Yeah. It's either because things are kind of rough. So it has a kind of inverted weirdness to it yeah, where yeah. we're going to say for some of the rough factions, yes, you, you really should. You really, really need it. to. It's going to make the difference in your game. Um, and then we're going to say with the really good factions or the factions that are really good for Mechatol anyways. Um, yeah. Just get it because you know what? You're just good at it. Yeah. Let's talk about uh, can a little bit. Yeah. Can is weird because can is like, is is how easy are you to stop if you go there first or if you go there later? Uh, but more importantly, can you, Mech Mechatol Mech Rex is like, can you do it reliably? Um, I don't know. I, I, I continue to have trouble like defining what is what is best about this this question i think the biggest thing is can you get proper utility out of mechatol rex it's not just mm -hmm. can you get there it's can you use it with purpose can you use right. it in a way that helps you and and actually get something really dramatic out of it mm -hmm. i well i would say it it the, the factions that we're going to say yes on, they either, it's sort of going back to the stuff we've already talked about, they're either factions uh, that can reliably get there first um, and or keep Mechatol, essentially. Yeah. Um, right. There are some factions that could potentially keep Mechatol, but they they it's hard to imagine them getting there first. And we're going to kind of yeah. discuss that. We're going to talk, you were going to say a lot of, we're going to use the word maybe a lot in this. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> um, which is just to say that it is, not re it's not something you can rely on but it's a good idea if you can make it happen essentially yeah. so let's start uh i think we we've typed these up just in alphabetical order there is no no kind of like greater consideration in how we're presenting these i think we're just going to try to knock them each out so let's start with old a arborek hunter mm -hmm. should arborek Go to Mechatol Rex. Um, yes, they most certainly should. I think Arborek is a faction that has a slow start. Um, they are 
they need the points essentially. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot yeah. of there are a lot of Arborek games that feel slow. They feel kind of sluggish. Um, I would say a lot of the really uh, good Arborek players that we've seen even tend to have sluggish early rounds that then translate into some sort of big swing round. Um, yeah. And most of that tends to center around Mechatol Rex um, because Arborek kind of solves one of the great Mechatol problems, which is how do you get a bunch of yep. infantry onto Mechatol Rex very quickly? Arborek answer that, you know, resoundingly with yeah. a, uh, yeah, we got that figured out. Right. Um, yeah. The, the, the harder question for Arborek is can they, and it's a bit more of a maybe because you're not going to get there first. You're almost never going to get there first as Arborek, right. so, which means when you when you show up, you got to probably show up with a decent amount, and that's not just ground forces. Yeah, you'll probably be bringing plenty of ground forces, but you also have to win that space combat. Mm -hmm. So depending on who's there and how much stuff is sitting above Mechatol, you could have some serious trouble taking Mechatol. But if you manage to take it, you're probably going to hold it the rest of the game because right. you can get there. You land four ground forces. You build four or eight more, depending on if you have Latani two or not. You have a ton of ground forces on Mechatol. You don't even care if your fleet's there anymore. You can bail the fleet later, and you have a huge, monstrous stack of ground forces that at any time you could add even more to it. Mm -hmm. So if you can, if you can get there, it's amazing, which is why the should is kind of a resounding yes, and then. The can is sort of a maybe. Hopefully, it works out for you in the mid game. Right, right. And I, I think in, in in a weird way, it's almost the can is a maybe because of how important I think it is to the Arborex strategy to try and take advantage of Mechatol Rex. Right. Um, in that, I don't think that Arborex really has any natural advantage to taking it first, essentially, no. like at all. Yeah. Um, but the fact that it could be such a focus for your strategy and so rewarding in order in in doing that, um, I I have seen Arbrex do some pretty wild stuff to get it. Um, yeah. There's also, I'll also say this: all of the games that I have seen where Arbrex did succeed in getting there first, um, generally involved, you know, warfare and or fleet logistics. Those those like random chance advantages yeah. that you can right. get. Um, and every time I see that, it's such a fun game, basically. Yeah, yeah and so a lot great. of times, too, there's that build-up to, if you see Arborek going for it, the rest of the table goes, uh, guys, if we let Arborek yeah. get there, yeah. it's over. We all have to just forget that Mechatol exists, mm -hmm. um, which is part of that strength. Uh, hey, what do you think about the Barony of Letnev? Uh, should they? Should Barony of Letnev go to Mechatol Rex? Um, we went with maybe... Um, mm -hmm. and I think, uh, I think the reason we went with maybe is Barony is kind of a good example of a faction that's just kind of good at generally a lot of important things. Like they're yeah. good, they're good at fleets and it turns out fleets are pretty important. Um, so the should is more, um, for Barony more of like, uh, uh, I guess I guess you could factor it into your strategy. You're not super dependent. I would not say they're very mechatol no. dependent, but they're right. not. If you if you remember our first round strategy guide, and if you're excited about the guide coming up next week, hopefully, um, the thing about Barony is that they kind of just write their own way in the universe. They like they they can do so much. They can they can set themselves up so many different ways. Yeah. Um, they you could have a barony style that is very mechatol focused if you wanted to essentially. Right. Yeah. The bigger question with barony is can they, which is kind of a resounding yes. Yeah. Uh, which is why the should is so kind of like waffly because it's sort of just like well, I mean, at any point you basically could just waltz in there. Yeah. Uh, you start with the blue tech. You've got a decent fleet to get there, so like you could take the custodians to, uh, point plenty of times, plenty of games. You could be the first one there. Right. Also, you have pretty good bombardment with all your dreads. You might have a ground force problem but if you decided to go take mechatol from somebody else you could probably pull it off right and you could park a big fleet above mechatol but that's where the weakness sort of comes in is to me barony defending mechatol rex is primarily in the fleet and as we said earlier that's not the most reliable it's path and it's it. not the most beneficial thing to you yourself so like yeah you could take it and in most cases it's going to be just for the custodian's point and mm -hmm. maybe you hold on to it for a little bit but i don't feel like there's that many games where Barony is like, oh, my mid game is like dependent on having Mechatol Rex to make stuff happen. I feel uh, like I, I've I've also seen situations though where Barony 
took Mechatol at a at a very important moment in the final round in order yeah. to make their strategy work. That that's also a potential for Barony that I think is important to note here, basically. Right. Right. Yeah, I think just the ability for them to have so much stuff and and to and they start with that blue tech is is kind of enough to be like, yeah, I mean, definitely always can. Always could could. Uh but should you is something you have to constantly evaluate every single game. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. All right, let's talk about the Clan of Sar. Matt, do you think that the Clan of Sar should take Mechatol Rex? You know, it's funny. I haven't been in a Clan of Sar uh, frame of mind for a mm-hmm. long time, so I almost am nervous to be like pretty confident in any answers with Clan of Sar. But I feel like, uh, yes, absolutely, yes, definitely. Yeah. Uh, because you just you 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 can do so much there their can is also a resounding yes which is why the should is mm-hmm. such a resounding yes mm-hmm. you can get there super fast you can get there with a ton of stuff and it's the same thing as the arborec problem uh, not problem the problem that arborec solves right you also have this production capacity limit thing solved you can bring your uh, space dock and you're not limited to just three you have four and if you upgrade up to six right i forget i, I might be saying the totals wrong um which is stupid but regardless clan Asar can build plenty of stuff there you can bring in two space docks and build a ton of stuff on mechatol rex if you want to um so it is always a very very viable path for the clan Asar to park on mechatol and you don't care about your home system so why right. wouldn't you just send right. everything there to the middle of the map and then see where you go from there we had an entire conversation earlier about like being in the center of the map means you can open up your opportunities for more stuff and that's literally all that clan Asar cares about is finding opportunities for somewhere else to go right and also i uh, i think it's important to note scavenge is a very reliable way for the clan Asar to have enough money in order to take mechatol early yep. the the yep. six influence price tag is is nothing to an early game Sar. Yeah. i feel like in some ways they're honestly set they're set up to take it early before yep. other people and with more um, fleet than anybody else can get out at that point in time. Uh, that's always the scary thing about a clan of star even being in the game is is other people look at Mechatol Rex and go, oh, I'd love to go there, but they you have to you always have to check and make sure and see if Sar is going for it. And if they are, that's when we run into that issue of do I just send in one carrier and one ground forces for the for the uh, point because Sar will definitely eat me alive here. So. Is it worth denying Sar the point to cost me the thing or whatever? Because if you send more, Sar will crush you every single time. And that's just the strength of Sar early. Yeah, I mean, I I think they are among, they are up there with the best of them, basically, yeah. when it comes to, to Can They Rex. I feel like when when this, uh, when I knew that we were doing this episode, it was like, well, they're they're one of the most obvious, next to, of course, Sol. Um, right. <laughs> Love just doubling down on that, uh, <laughs> uh, but no. Let's uh, let's move on to another uh, big scary uh, fleet faction uh, to to a much lesser degree. The Embers of Muat. Matt, they should, are should they should they Rex? <laughs> they are so tricky. Uh, I think this is one of our. This is our. F- this is a maybe, mm-hmm. uh, and it's a maybe because of the meta. Mu- Muat definitely can take Mechatol, right? You come in with one War Sun, you bombard the crap out of it, you send a couple infantry there, and you park the War Sun above it. That sounds great, doesn't it? Sure. Except for Muat already has this problem of a lot of times people look at Muat and go, ah, I don't like those War Suns being around. Uh, so you become a target. And also you get people going, ooh, I'd love to kill one of those War Suns and completely just gut Muat's whole game. And if you put that War Sun in the middle of the map, well... You've made that a pretty prime target, and you've, you're have you getting points off of being there, which means people really, really want to attack you, and you might not have much on the back end to to save yourself. Right. So are you really going to send your only war son to Mechatol Rex to probably lose it? I don't know. So it's, it's, a, it's a maybe, depending on if other people seem to be eyeing you and paying attention. Yeah, so this was this was the only faction where I, where I was well, maybe not the only one, but I I almost wanted to say should you no. Right. Um and almost even can you no. But it <laughs> it is true. I mean, Muat has the ability to bypass planetary shield with their war sons does factor into a lot of games um when it comes to deciding who's going to take Mechatol Rex. Um, I don't see Muat ever getting there before anybody else, 
but I've certainly seen a lot of late late game or mid game situations where Muat moved in on somebody else and was like, yeah, yeah you know, that PDS you put down there, that's not really going to help with me. And I've got plenty of bombardment. So here we go. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just that Muat's situation is so tenuous, you know, that it, it feels a little bit like they might not get enough out of it to justify having even more heat than they already get just for right. having a war son. If if I can make any case for yes, you should, it would just be the command counter problem that sure. Muat has. Yeah. It is very much worth it to have two additional command counters around. So if you are are a, you know, a meta guru and have the ability to be like, listen, guys, I am going to just park here and I will never take a point from it. I just want the command counters. And if you can manage that and not have a target on your back by parking on Mechatol... Just the command counters are alone to help the rest of your game. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's certainly worth it if you're in that kind of meta where people allow you to do that kind of stuff. I'm not. If I if I Matt Martins put a War Sun above Mechatol Rex, you bet your bottom dollar everyone would try to take it out. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just not. It's not an option I've ever felt like I have the ability to do. But right. there are plenty of metas that allow that kind of thing. Yeah. So I th- I think it's very viable in those types of groups. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes that makes sense. Let's jump into another complicated one for me, uh, which is the Emirates of Hakan. Yeah. Hunter, should you? Well, so we've said that maybe. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we've also said maybe uh, maybe they can and maybe they should. Um, right. I think Hakan has a really kind of weird relationship with Mechatol Rex in that Hakan has a lot of money. Uh, the six influence price tag is nothing. They have a blue start, but what I where I feel like they kind of lose it is that that way to really justify taking it and holding it. Um, I feel like sometimes I've seen Hakan players spend too much. They don't have any natural advantages, yeah. and like, I mean, there was something you you threw out earlier, which was that Hakan goes down the yellow path a lot, meaning that transit diodes is maybe more likely than uh, other factions. Um, I still don't know that transit diodes is enough, though, because Hakan, even with transit diodes, has a lot of need to move ground forces around. Um, Their their home system in general is kind of a nightmare as far as defending it. Right. That's um, the, that you're going to use your transit diodes almost every single round on just your home system. It's it's a nice idea to transit diodes some dudes to to Mechatol Rex, but the reason Hakan for me is a is a maybe leaning yes. The the only time it's a yes is because you had a pathway to Mechatol and in round 2 you could get an early initiative uh, and you can beat somebody else there cuz you can you'll, you'll probably get gravity drive. So mm-hmm. you can very easily be the first faction there. If anything a con is the go to I sent a single carrier and one ground force to Mechatol right. because the cost of that actually isn't very big for them. So sending that little bit there is not a big deal and holding it is not really on my radar. Mm-hmm. Just just getting there first is very possible and worth it. Right. Um, another thing I'm going to throw in to even complicate this discussion even further is Quantum Data Hub Node. So, I mean, yeah. if Hakan can take right. Mechatol and shore it up somehow, um, they have no way to cheat with that. They just have to somehow do it. Um, then in the late game, we can go for Quantum Data Hub Node and reliably take Imperial and get that Mechatol point. And, I mean, right. I I know we have heard plenty of plays of the weeks that involve that doing that exact thing. Right. Um, I think I think the thing about Hakan when it comes to this discussion is that their only advantage is money. They have no like kind of rule bendy advantage right. that allows them to be good at Mechatol. It's just simple it's just simply that Hakan has the money to throw at it, which maybe isn't as compelling as some of these other factions, basically. Right. But it's not it's not that they're bad at it. Yeah. It's just that it's an opportunity thing, like anything else. For for Hakan, for, for some of these other factions we've been talking about, you kind of sit down and you go, okay, what do I think about Mechatol this game? And Hakan, I feel like I sit down and I don't specifically think about Mechatol, Mechatol but then if I notice that there's an opening on Mechatol, I go, oh, hmm, I could, I'm could, i poised to strike. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but I'm not starting the game going, what's my Mechatol strategy? Uh, versus someone like, you know, clan Asar, I sit down and go, uh, is this my Mechatol game Asar? Or do I jump on my opponent's pie slice or whatever? Yeah, um, I agree th- with there's, that. There's a different starting thought. 
process uh, for, for the two factions. Yeah, and uh, I, I think we're going to hit a couple other factions where we hit on a lot of these same themes. I think already, I'm going to go ahead and say, I think Hakan is the maybeest maybe yeah. yes. faction in that I, I feel like they they should have their eyes open the widest, basically. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, the next one, uh, I think, is an easy one to burn through. Guess what? We're up to the Federation of Soul, and we just recently did a whole episode about this whole uh -huh. thing. So uh, should you? Yes. Can you? Yes. Nuff said. Nuff drop said. the mic. <laughs> if you're listening to this episode without listening to the Soul Guide, the basic idea is you start with Blue Tech. You can get fast cruisers. Your ground forces are amazing. You have orbital drops, so you can always just put more dudes on Mechatol Rex, and more command counters are great for you to put more dudes on Mechatol Rex. A right. command counter per round... From Mechatol Rex itself is worth two more dudes on Mechatol. And you it's already a have a command works. counter advantage, so it exactly. feeds into that. You're also like the six influence or whatever. You're rich. You're a rich yeah. faction. You're on the rich side. You've got four four commodities. You've got a promissory note that's all the rage right now. Your right. promissory note is in vogue, my friend. <laughs> Yeah, should you? Yes, can you? Yes, absolutely. Let's move on to yeah. the Ghost of Creus. Uh oh, skirt. Should you? This is similar to Hakan, where we've yeah. said, should you? Maybe. Can you? Maybe. Um, yeah. I would say they are to a much lesser extent than Hakan, though. Like it, it is. It's mostly just that Ghost of Creus is hard to talk about in any discussion that involves all of the factions because of uh just because the movement stuff is so yeah. bonkers here's here's the real argument about ghost of Creus. okay can you can you get there yeah speed wise oh you you'll have a million opportunities of having stuff in range of mechatol rex but you start with one carrier, so are you going to take enough planets to get six influence? That's a big question mark. I don't know. Depends on your map. Very, very, very much depends on your map. Because mm -hmm. uh, your home system isn't giving you doing you any favors on the influence front. Right. Uh, so you could easily get there first, but can you actually take Mechatol Rex? Who knows? The second thing is, can you have you sacrificed everything just to go to Mechatol? Are you sending your only carrier to Mechatol? Have you filled out the rest of your slice? Is this even a game where you care about your slice? Sometimes ghosts don't care about having a slice. Sometimes they're just like, I pick off pieces of everybody's slice. That's why it's such a big maybe, because the position of a ghost player in any given game is such a big question mark already. It's really hard to say how well... Uh, Mechatol Rex is going to factor into your plans. Mm -hmm. This is another situation, though, where the the extra command counters is certainly a, a bigger boon than for other factions. You you have a command counter problem with ghosts, so it's nice to be there, but I don't know how successfully you're going to get there first or take it from somebody else. I don't know how much stuff you're going to be able to bring later on. Right, right. I mean, it's Ghost of Creus is kind of... It, uh, it's kind of a clunky start. You've got, in some ways, you've got a lot of options, but in some ways, it feels you feel a little bit limited as far as your plastic yep. and just kind of your economy in general. And I, I just want to throw this out there for all the people that might be screaming uh, about the flagship at us yep. right now. Um, I feel like that option kind of like the idea of parking the flagship on Mechatol Rex, and then you just have this direct connection between um, your home system and Mechatol Rex. So like, oh, I can build stuff out of my home and it just goes straight to Mechatol Rex. That's cool, uh, except for the, I mean, the flagship's obviously got to stay alive, which is like a huge vulnerability right there yep. Yep. Um, to the to this whole strategy. And and also I think it's it sounds like you now have a situation similar to the Hakan, but you had to like set it up in game. Yeah. Um, and with a flagship. So like, Anytime you're putting a flagship out on Mechatol Rex, I always feel like in like anytime we're going to reference doing that, um, which we already sort of have was with, with Barony of Letnev. Um, I it we should say that anytime you're putting a uh, flagship out forward away from your home system, right. you are just begging for someone to go after that secret objective yep, of destroying. Absolutely, it is the absolutely a target for at least one player at the table. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the the other little just thing to toss out there in in Creus's defense is putting one of your wormholes above Mechatol Rex and then being there and having that movement bonus out of Mechatol Rex makes that positional advantage even cooler. Right. I uh, agree that's, with that. That is kind of a thing, but you kind of have that anywhere and you can kind of get all over the map anyway. So I don't know if it really, it's almost a win more 
to have that in the center of the map versus like adjacent to the center of the map mm-hmm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like you're going to get everywhere. It's not re- you're not really stretched for like, oh, if only I could reach one more distance away. It's like right. you 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 have almost everything you need in range. Right. So, I mean, that's why we've gone we've gone maybe maybe um I would say if we if we had ranked them in any kind of order, I would probably have put Ghost of Creus somewhere just below the average just a yeah. little just like a tick or two below yeah, the the uh the median faction here's a fun one to talk about mm-hmm. the l1 z1 x mine net uh i want to ask can they first can they uh yes for a lot of the same reasons that we said barony letnov uh yeah. could they they got good fleets they got good tech um they're they're just good at fighting y'all yeah good fighters yeah. If anything, I mean the the should they is also the same as Barony's, which is to say it, it is still kind of a maybe though. Um, really, honestly, I feel like we too often equate Barony Aletnev with L one C one X. Like I just always think of them the same way, and in right. fact, sometimes I get them confused. Like I get their flagships mixed up in my head a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, but their their reasons are slightly different in terms of their in terms of the should um, L one Z one X mind net gets a boost on the should for me just purely because you going there second can sometimes have a huge benefit if someone else got there and dropped pds hey free pds to right, gobble up right. and a cool position to be in and it's it, it can just mechatol look, rex can look extra juicy for an l1 z1 x player like in the mid or late mm-hmm, game mm-hmm. uh it, it can be very very cool to go there so it, it makes it slightly above the barony for me in terms of should they um and can they the bombardment thing alone, like, I mean, you know, Harrow, yeah, you can probably take Mechatol Rex without much problem. Well, that's if they haven't put a PDS down. I mean, they sure. should put a PDS down. Yeah. Um, I, I would say, actually, let's let's compare them. Who do you think Who do you think is better at Mechatol Rex? Just overall, who do you think is better at it? Barony I, or L1? I think probably, man, I don't know. I, I want to say L1, but I don't think I have a reason to back it up yet. See, I, I have a reason to say Barony. Go ahead. Because I just feel, I feel like that flagship just takes the cake. That yeah. flagship is such a Mechatol Rex buster. Just yeah. like it, 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 I, every single time I have played uh, where I am in the same game with Barony, I can think of two off the top of my head. Yeah. Um, and I have gone for Mechatol Rex. Their flagship has been out, and I have just been like, man, I don't know how I'm going right. to get set up fast enough what am to I gonna stop do? that thing from blowing me off of this. Because, yeah. like, the, I mean, the classic easy way to take Mechatol Rex is get, get there, get PDS down as soon as you can. Because Bombardment is the easiest way to ruin someone's, uh, like, just recently taken Mechatol Rex day. Yeah. Um, but the PDS is just a magic... Nope, it's done. You can't do that. Um, and the fact that it does shut down L1 like that, in that way, I feel like gives Barony, I think, the better side of that. Yeah, I'll take it. I I, I think that's convincing enough. Um, uh, who we want to talk about next? Uh, we, we are on to another weird one, uh, and it's the Mentac Coalition. And I do not know how I feel about mm-hmm. the Mentac Coalition's relationship. With Mechatol Rex. Right. Should they? Uh, we went with maybe. Um, I would say maybe even closer to no. Yeah. Um, they don't... I mean, besides the points, which they all like that. All the factions yeah. like the points. Um, Mentag does, is not especially hurting for command counters. Not really, um, no. They're not especially... I mean, I, th- I guess the one thing... The one boon they kind of get from it is, generally speaking, they're going to be able to pillage everybody if they're on Mechatol. But yeah. generally speaking, they're going to be able to pillage everybody anyways. Yeah, like, if you find one just, wormhole, you can probably sort it out. Yeah, that is that is not the most difficult thing to do as Mentax. So hopefully you're not taking Mechatol Rex just for that and only that. That would yeah. seem like an awful lot to pay for that. I don't right. know. They're kind of a difficult one to talk about in this context. Well, um, and the bigger question then to answer is, can they? And this is the f- first one where, where we said, not really. We kind of said no. Yeah. Uh, it, not that they don't... It's not like they specifically, oh, no, you can't take Mechazol. But Mentech is good at space combat. And Mentech is good at, you know, stealing and getting these other economical advantages. But I, I wouldn't 
call Mentak good at like taking planets from other people. They're mm-hmm. good at doing weird precision strikes, but Mechatol Rex is not a planet that people usually leave undefended. Right. Um, and that's what Mentak is kind of good at is is getting through stuff and taking an undefended planet with like a single cruiser that has moved through. You know, it's cruiser twos are their bread and butter, and then you usually have slow carriers outside of that. So you just don't really have anything that is helping you go take Mechatol Rex. Yeah. I, I agree. Uh, I I think if, like, especially the f- kind of first half of our discussion where we were just kind of laying out, like, oh, what does it take to be a Mechatol faction? They just don't really check any of those boxes. No. They're not right. They're not really like a ground force faction. Um, PDS is something for Mentech, somewhat. Sure. Yeah. yeah. They're not really a big, scary fleet faction. Um, so they just, like, kind of half-heartedly check a couple boxes. Yeah. But it's not to an extent that feels really solid. Uh, they don't start with a blue tech either. So forget, like, you know, you, if you beat... A, another faction in the race to Mechatol, it's probably right. going to be because of some sort of luck, you know, thing. Yeah. Fle- uh, uh, it's, it's getting Cruiser 2 fast is like your only right. pathway to, right. to doing that. And and that's, you know, that's maybe sometimes you get that. Uh, and it's it's nice if you can sneak it in there. That's about the only way I see Mentech actually caring about Mechatol is if they have a way to take it with a single cruiser and a ground force in round two. Mm-hmm. That's that's about all I can think of. Um, yeah. And, and they might have that trade good advantage to, to make it easy on themselves to take it. So I, I don't see them doing it in the late game, but I could see an early game snipe in the right situation. But it's it's kind of situational. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. agreed. Uh, Hunter, I want you to talk about the Nalu Collective. Because <laughs> in prepping this, you had the bigger argument. I was leaning towards not feeling very hot on them, but I think you have a more convincing argument of why they get a couple yeses here. I think I think Nalu has a has the most interesting relationship with Mechatol Rex, and that I think they can exploit it in a way that uh, is more fun than basically anybody else. So so we're saying um, should they should they take Mechatol Rex? Uh, yeah, and can they? Uh, also, yeah. Um, I wouldn't say that they're the best. I, I'm not, I'm not trying to come out here guns blazing, but right. I'm just trying to point out that they have a lot of advantages that just mesh really well with Mechatol Rex. Um, going first in the round every time. That is to me the easiest way to sneak either the custodian's token or uh popping. Uh, popping off Imperial early because you were right. like already on Mechatol Rex from like the round before, or you have fleet logistics and you're doing something like that. It's just, it's a beautiful, um, and, and, and that combos beautifully with the retreat ability that right. they have. I've seen so yeah. many Nalu take Mechatol Rex because they were trying to exploit it for an opportunity and either they succeeded and they exploited, they, they got that custodian's token, they got the Imperial point, and then somebody's like, well, I'm going to remove you down. They're like, yeah, whatever. And then they just right. leave. Um, and then I've also seen what's nice is Nalu, I feel like, is one of the only factions that can just kind of give Mechatol a shot. Can just right. be like, you know what? I'm just, I, I can take it right now. Um, I'm just going to take it real quick and let's see what happens. And, and yeah. without very much risk, you know? Yeah, I definitely agree on that point more than anything is everyone else has to come to Mechatol with like a pretty big plan. And Mechatol just kind of gets to go, I I point these ships at it and I go. And if it doesn't work out later, uh, I'll be fine. Everything's yeah. going to be totally okay. Yeah. But um, e- every time I see the Nalu sneak out the custodian's token, like I've been playing a soul and that has happened to me. And I've been like, oh, wild blast you. Like, yeah. how dare you do that? Well, yeah, to let's, me, let's never the, forget about flank speed and warfare, basically. Sure. That, can, that can really change all of the math on yeah. everything. To me, the bigger Nalu get, though, is more of a mid-game Mechatol take, where they come in with the Matriarch, their flagship, and a ton of fighters, and then it's just a it's so easy for them to take Mechatol Rex. When, when they bring eight fighters and a ground force, well, they don't care about whatever you have on Mechatol, because they probably have more. Uh, yeah, ju- just in that alone. I don't know. I feel like I haven't seen that as much in my games, and I also get scared. The Matriarch is also, I think, kind of one of those flagships where if it's out in the middle of Mechatol Rex, yeah. it might be kind of vulnerable. It can be scary. But, it can but, be, but, but I- you are right that it is an opportunity. That is their if they if they need to use like a club 
to get there, that is their yeah. opportunity to do it. Yeah. I think the biggest reason the should is a yes is purely because that can be your game winner in so many games. Because you have the zero initiative, if you're sitting on Mechatol already, if you took it at the end, what, what you do with Nalu is the round you take politics, you take Mechatol Rex right at the end of the round, and then the start of next round, you have Imperial, you get the free point, nobody gets to do anything about it. Mm-hmm. And that's that's like your that's your gimme. Uh, so it's just such a strong play. It's it's you you have to say yes for Nalu. Yeah. Let's talk about the Necro virus. <laughs> or or let's or let's not talk about let's not them talk at about all. The necro. Uh, um, sh- should they is should they, should they is is maybe that's the be- as best you can say with Necro. Uh, they don't need the command counters, so that's wow. not really a point in the in the hat. They don't need the central position necessarily the central position can help oh you have access to more people with their tech but i think a necro that is focusing too much on just like ooh, what tech can i get gimme 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 that's not quite helping your your meta that's not helping how people view you um so you're not like it's not like as necro you are only constantly ever stealing tech and so mm-hmm. you need a central position to go steal tech all the time um so mechatol doesn't do a ton for you outside of the points obviously the points are always good um but the bigger question is can you and that's not really a question we can answer yeah i don't i mean because like even just try and i mean what right now could we say uh, can we say anything about Necro's tech and the order that they're going to get it in a reliable way, really? Right. Um, nope. They start with Daxiv, so yeah. that's something. <laughs> that's fun. Uh, here's here's one, I guess, argument kind of for Necro sitting on Mechatol with their flagship. If you can get enough ground forces there, that's a pretty sweet defense. Uh, oh, yeah. But, but we would kind of always rather see that flagship protecting your home system than Mechatol. Yeah. In, in most cases. I'm I'm less of a fan of uh, the offensive flagship. Now, I mean, yeah. there is a world where Necro builds a space dock on uh, Mechatol and then the flagship out in the middle. And that could be effective, but then you're probably going to have to have, like, I don't know, at least a round or two of quiet in order for yeah. you to really set this up, which seems it's, like a lot to ask. It's basically. just also unpredictable that I don't, think we can even give like a solid answer it's definitely not a yes on either one yeah uh unless you get the obvious tech if you get latani too hey man go for it you can do crazy stuff but like also you could do all kinds of crazy stuff if you manage to get latani too so i don't even know what to tell you about your game mm-hmm. um well so. and it's even i think there well it's even kind of reasonable to say that there might be games where you get gravity drive early enough Right. To make an early play for it and get the custodian token. And I mean, that's got to be a factor too. Now all of a right. sudden we're dealing with a Necro that was able to get there. I don't know. I I would say more often than not, Necro doesn't need the extra heat in the early and mid game though. That Maybe feels kind of solid. That feels yeah. like that's normally true. I don't know. Right. I kind of wish Magi was here to answer this question. I, <laughs> I feel like he would say that his goal is more because he tries to play like nice necro sometimes well, like earlier diplomatic, on. yeah diplomatic yeah. yeah maybe not nice but mechatol rex i feel like would add a little too much heat to his style of play in the early to mid game yeah. i don't know he i just I, put I out if i'm right he just put out an absolutely monstrous guide to necro uh on board game geek and reddit and I haven't read it because uh, I I can't read books. They're too long. And he wrote a <laughs> book about the Necro. So uh, I don't know. Maybe he said something about Mechatol in there. I'll be interested to, to hear his errata. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about the Thardak Nor. Okay. Um, Thardak Nor, should they? Uh, yeah, they need it. They're like, they're kind of like <laughs> yeah. Arborek. They're kind of like Arborek where it's like, man, you could really use the... You could use the Leg help, up. basically. Yeah. Um, and it's not like Muat, where it feels like that leg up is too costly for what right. it gets you. Um, yeah. I feel like they fall into a very similar place as um, Arborek, with the only difference being that they don't seem like like it's as good of an idea. Like they don't seem yeah. as capable of it. So we're going to say, yeah. can they Rex? No, or not really. Or <laughs> right. This is part of mad. the difficulty of being Sardak Nor. Should you? Yeah. Can you? Well, no, not in practice. <laughs> <laughs> 
that's the, uh, you, you have good ground forces, right? We can't discount that. Your ground forces are fighting at plus one, but you don't have a way to get ground forces to Mechatol Rex reliably. You don't have any sort of production advantage. Mm-hmm. Uh, teching to Space Dock 2 seems like a waste of time. Uh, so you, you don't you just don't have any way to get stuff there, which means whatever you send there initially is probably all that's going to be there for a little bit unless you're like every round activating Mechatol just to reinforce it, which that sounds terrible. Um, Exo Trireme 2s could could park above Mechatol and help the space game. Uh, but even that it, it that does that's not a like totally reliable Mechatol game. Uh, so it's hard to say. I mean, the, the Exo Trireme 2s invading Mechatol Rex you know, and bombarding if there aren't PDS there right, and then there invading with PDS. good ground forces, yeah. that sounds good. But you're relying on there being no PDS there. And that's that's sort of a question mark. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like on the, I don't know, that they're, they're a really hard one to evaluate in all this because there is a lot of raw material that's there. And I guarantee you there's a lot of people that have had games where they're like, I made it work like kind of screaming right now. And I hear you, I hear you, I hear you. I just think if you just look at the raw data, it just doesn't seem like they're up to snuff compared to a lot of these other factions. Right. Um, Yeah. We could probably turn the can they to a maybe, but it just felt right to say like (sighs) that you might have other stuff to worry about. Right. I I feel like in general, if you go through this, it's like, if they're not fast, well, that's a big loss. Okay. Right. And, And Sardak's not fast. Um, and also if they don't have any kind of production, what, like if they don't have some sort of work around of the bad things about Mechatol Rex, then that's yeah. also a point against, and I see no work around and they're not fast. Yep. So that yeah. just seems, eh, that's, doesn't, that's rough. Doesn't feel great. Mm-hmm. Um, the, I feel like the only times I see Sardak nor take Mechatol Rex is because someone completely abandoned it and they're like, Oh, I can take Mechatol Rex for free. Right. That, right. That's it. Uh, I, I don't ever see it any other time. I agree. Let's talk about the opposite of Sardak Noor, mm-hmm. uh, and it's the Universities of Jolnar. Yeah. I I love the Universities of Jolnar's relationship with Mechatol Rex. Mm-hmm. You've got a blue tech. You can be fast. You don't start with really enough ground forces. You said earlier, Hunter, you made the point to say you need 2C4I, and they start with two ground forces. So, like, getting ground forces to Mechatol fast is quite a commitment unless you can find a way to get pump out a lot of more ground forces some other way Mm -hmm. um so getting there fast certainly possible taking it from someone else though that's really 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 tricky as Mm -hmm. university of jolnar you are notoriously terrible at ground combat yeah uh, because of your minus one and so if you don't get there first i don't like your odds of ever getting mechatol rex so we said should they yeah yeah, I mean you're you're a good faction, and you can if you do get there, you're gonna get some power out of it. If you have Erez siphons, that could either be a deterrent or at the very least just get you out on the map. And you, you can do a lot, and more ground or more command tokens always helps. Uh, but can you is more of a maybe yeah. because if you if you don't get there first, I I don't know what your odds are. The thing, Matt, the thing that you were saying about Erez though, as far as it being a deterrent for Mechatol Rex, I feel like that's definitely true, but it's only really going to, it's only a factor that one time. I don't think it's going to be much of a t- deterrent so much as it's yeah. just nice for Jolnar to get those trade Something. goods. <laughs> yeah, basically. Exactly. But I yeah, feel it's like only the only happen the once, the only time it's deter a deterrent really is whenever it's, it's, Either I'm going to have to do multiple activations on Jolnar yeah. that then it feels like, ugh. Um, and then also the more frivolous stuff. Like, do I really want to try and take back this one planet they took right. and give them four more trade goods right now? And like, yeah. you know, what, what is... Most people what will take do? the trade of giving you four trade goods to take Mechatol Rex from. Yeah. It's, it's definitely yeah. worth it. So it's yeah, I agree. Critical. It's really not a deterrent. Um, and, and because your ground forces are weak, a lot of people look at it and go, I could probably make this work pretty easily. I feel like um, an interesting opportunity with it, though, is like, let's say you've got like Fighter 2, and you know for a fact somebody's about to jump on Mechatol, but the space is empty. Yeah. Just get your E-Res in there. You know what I mean? Right, just pop right, in and right. be like, hey, I'm, hang out. <laughs> I'm here. Hey, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> come get me. Um. Okay. I don't want to do this, Hunter. I don't oh. want to do this next part. So the next one is the Winu. Ah. Um, and uh, <laughs> they uh, they are like good at Mechatol Rex, uh, right? Oh, wait. No, they're not. Um, no, they're not. So the Winu should 
uh, <laughs> they should go for Mechatol Rex. Um, their only advantage because it's the their only game. advantage and it's important. But we've kind of said as far as can, uh, no. And obviously, when we say no, like we've said no all, very few times in this episode, we yeah. mean like normally, like most of the time. Like, yeah, it's probably it, it, it's probably not something you can just like count on. But right. it could always happen. But what's weird about Winu is I think it's the only time we're going to say that someone um, can't really do it. But not only saying that yes they should but like with winu it's like it's kind of the only thing you can build your strategy around right which is the great tragedy of yep. winu basically yeah we cannot discount that like your ability to take it for free that is very very good and you get that free point uh you, your hegemonic trade policy is an amazing tech if that's you a park on right Rex, there that's a huge production workaround if you can get there and survive for an entire round but those are both in practice very big ifs uh, in in traditional like six or five player games. Three or four player games, oh man, should, yes, can, yes, go for it. You're going to crush. Uh, but in a five or six player game, it is much more difficult for Winu to pull this off and they mm -hmm. leave themselves very, very open. If we ask about our checkbox earlier, blue tech, you can start with blue tech, but you should probably start with Sarween tools. Uh, carriers, nope, you only have one. So that sucks. And uh, what was our third criteria? Uh, space dock and PDS. Yes, you'll be able to get space docks and PDS there, but it's gonna, it's not gonna be effective until the, the, the space dock you won't get to use right away, and mm -hmm. that's annoying. Uh, you, you do avoid the influence. You're not gonna get a lot of ground forces there unless your hegemonic can get online. So it's just like this weird, like you maybe can try to get there first and then it's going to take you a long time to get everything going. It's and like that's not a good position. The saddest thing about Winu is that. They are, they have to do a lot of setup to just be as good at Mechatol Rex as some factions are out the gate. Yep. So, like, yeah. some factions just start and it's like, hey, you're pretty good at this. And Winu, yeah. it's like, yeah, if you plan and you look a million steps ahead and you get all of your ducks in a row, then maybe you'll be all right. And that's, that's just too slow, basically, yep. is the yeah. problem. But you I mean, it hurt too hard. They they are uniquely set up to take advantage of a kind of tug of war happening between other players over Mechatol Rex. That's certainly somewhat true. Um, yeah. But then what do we have? I mean, we're basically just saying your strategy should be hope the other players do a bunch of crazy <laughs> stuff. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, I, that is literally it. That's when you play as winner, you hope everyone else screws things up a bunch to, to give you an opening. Right. And I mean, that, there's something to that. There is definitely a like, oh, well, keep your eyes open. You know, yeah. watch what people are doing. Even maybe, I don't know, like manipulate them. Right. I don't know. Right. <laughs> yeah. When it was it's, such a difficult faction to talk about in this conversation because... We could have a whole episode where we just talk about Winu and Mechatol, and here we are talking about it for like a couple minutes and just being yeah. like, "Yeah, it sucks. I don't, I, I don't know what to tell you." <laughs> so let's stop and let's move on to, I think, the most, maybe the most misleading for me personally, mm -hmm. the Extra Kingdom. Uh, we've decided to say should they and can they are maybes. Mm -hmm. I really want to believe in the Mechatol Extra. But Hunter, you talked me down, and I think you have a pretty decent stance on Extra and their abilities on Mechatol Rex. Well, I just feel like there's a lot of excitement over the idea of parking the flagship on Mechatol Rex. Um, and I just... I, I feel like Extra doesn't um, lend itself to the type of... Uh, focusing on Mechatol Rex out the gate type of play no. that I think would yeah. be required of this. Like, I guess this is kind of a weird way to put it, but it's almost like if you started playing extra and were like, all right, I'm going to go for this Mechatol Rex play. I feel like that would be inadvisable and you wouldn't set it up correctly. The right. only way it would happen is if you built yourself up the right way, which is solid PDS ne network and the flagship in a defensive, like, I'm going to make sure my home system is solid and that people can't take my stuff. But Mechatol Rex just feels like you're too far out. It doesn't feel yeah. like extra anymore. Right. Um, 
But I mean, there is, you know, there's that raw possibility of it because traditionally the flagship is going to be out near Mechatol Rex. I don't know. Right. I, I feel like Extra is almost always a factor when it comes right. to Mechatol Rex, but not like the best setup to actually dominate on the exactly. planet itself. And that's why there's such a weird one to talk about in this context, because it's more like you you absolutely ruin other people's Mechatol Rex game without taking it yourself. Mm-hmm. It's it's almost better to park your flagship adjacent to Mechatol Rex and kind of see what happens and see how other people shake out rather than being there yourself. Um, th- there's a big issue of you're, you're not going to get there first. You don't have any way to be the first one to Mechatol necessarily right. without just sheer luck of like an early flank speed. Mm-hmm. Um, but in most games, you will not be the first one to Mechatol and you don't really have a way to take Mechatol. Again, x is about getting somewhere first and then heavily defending it. So it, the, the reason it's kind of a maybe is like, if you got there, yeah, you'd probably hold it pretty well. If you got if you got the PDS down and you had your flagship even next door, right? You could you could put some ground forces and PDS on Mechatol, not put a big fleet on Mechatol, but put your flagship adjacent to Mechatol and you have a decent defense. But you have to set all of that up. You have to get all of that there into position and accomplish all of those goals without anybody interrupting it. Mm-hmm. And that is the trickier step. Yeah. Your tech path is also just kind of weird. I mean, like, yeah. if, if we're going down, if we're trying to get PDS and maybe Cruiser 2, that doesn't feel like that syncs up to me with Mechatol Rex. Right. You would have to go down some sort of weird, like, like I mean, maybe go for a green-blue extra that might be the ticket, um, right? But then our our PDS are kind of not you know, doing us any favors. Yeah, kind of yeah. wonkier. I mean, I feel like plasma scoring is like pretty essential for extra. It feels weird to cut that out. I yeah. mean, maybe the flagship can can rock it without it, but it just feels like kind of a, a missed opportunity there. So yeah. I don't know. I th- I think extra when it comes to tech, uh, the tech path is also a problem essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's talk about a fun one. And uh, the one that I feel like I learned the most about when we were doing the initial guides. Mm-hmm. Yin Brotherhood. Mm-hmm. Should they... Our oh, favorite yes. faction. <laughs> <laughs> Should they? Yes. Can they? Yeah. They're mm-hmm. really good at it. They're like crazy, crazy good at it. Kind of at any phase. that They maybe lack a little bit on the getting there first front. They, You know, you're, you're not really getting early blue tech. Um but you can probably take out anybody uh, that is on Mechatol, depending on what, you know, maybe not Clan Asar, but most other people with Indoctrinate going to Mechatol Rex has some real power to it. Uh, and and holding it is even more powerful. The, the idea that if you park four ground forces there, someone needs to bring like six or seven ground forces to get you off of Mechatol Rex. Mm-hmm. They have to very, very hard commit to removing you from Mechatol if you manage to get there. Right, right. They're they're like the sneaky version of what Soul does. Like right. they're they're the the sneak in and all of a sudden I, you didn't even see it coming that I was going to take Mechatol Rex and now I've taken it essentially. Right. They're right. and it's funny, their tech path is also like weird, but because transit diodes is such a great get for yeah. Gen Brotherhood, it's it's works. It like it yeah. it works in spite of it. Basically. For me, my Yin Brotherhood setup is usually, yeah, I don't really care about getting the Custodian's token. If I can luck into it, that would be great. But I'm definitely sending my first carrier in the constant direction to Mechatol Rex so that by round you know, three, I can move in with a decent enough force where I'll definitely be able to take it. What My goal is to find the person who takes it fast with very little and go crush that force and take it easily and then hold it. Right. So like, yeah, I'm not going to custodians, but I'll probably hold Mechatol all game if mm-hmm. I get there as Yin. That's yeah. my goal. I What I like about what you just said is for some reason I was also going to make the exact same point of it feels like the Yin Brotherhood is a take it in the mid game faction. Yep. Like, yeah. and, and maybe the best suited for that slot. Because I, so. I do feel like if you, if you go, if you wait too long, if we get into the late game, I don't think the Yin Brotherhood is going to be taking it from some no. of the some of the bigger fleet boys that might take it basically. Right. But if right. you get in in the mid game, you might you might hold it the rest of the game basically. Yeah. Pop a You're PDS down and indoctrinate is going to get you so far. Yeah, yeah, you are practically guaranteed at least one imperial point if yeah. you take Mechatol in the mid game. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I would I would say 
they're like a slightly time sensitive version of exactly what makes the soul so fun uh, yep. to play in uh, in Mechatol. Yeah. All right, we got one more. We got, we got one more. One and final it's, one. It's a weird one to end on. Weird it's a weird one to end on. The Asarl tribes. We call you called Hakan the maybeest of maybes. Uh, we put ghosts like a little bit below Hakan. Where do you put Asarl in this? They're they're in that same you know tier. same range. Um, yeah. I would almost put them exactly where Hakan is because it's a lot of the same kind of stuff. Where yeah. it's just like Isarl. Isarl doesn't seem like super specifically set up for Mechatol Rex, except right. for the fact that Isarl just has like a good kind of general advantage. That you know it, what? What? Go ahead. I just thought of a great way to put it. We talked about Hakan. Really, the only reason we're putting Hakan as like a decent maybe is because they can get there right away. Like they could, they can get the gravity drive. Mm-hmm. So Hakan is the early game maybeest of maybes. Asarl is the late game maybeest of maybes. Oh sure, I I agree. Asarl, with that. Asarl in those late game rounds is going to stall out, and then like let's say it's a round where Asarl has Imperial. You stall, you stall, you stall. Then you take. Mecha Tall Rex because nobody else can do anything about it. Then you pop Imperial. Then you win the game. That's yeah. like a pretty standard Asaro close. Yeah, uh, and even even in ra- rounds, you know, in a round before the final round, you can have a huge swing round as Asaro with that maneuver. And there's plenty of ways to set that up. So Asaro's end game very often has Mecha Tall Rex as part of its consideration, mm-hmm. but it's not something you're rushing to get to, and it's not something you're always holding all game. You don't have anything that helps you on that front, but you do just have the ability to often decide i'm going to take that planet and i have all these cards and all the ability to stall i'll right. get it if i want it and right. my rex is a great planet to want the thing about a sorrel is the longer that you play the like the more likely it is that you have one of those action cards in your hand that really helps you steal mechatol rex suddenly i'm thinking like your crippled defenses your um Oh, what's the card that just like kills some infantry suddenly? Plague. Yeah, plague. Oh my god, I had such a horrible time with someone when someone plagued me at a Gen Con. <laughs> um, when I when I was on Mechatol, Jesus, I can't well, believe you just reminded me of that. So I, I think the other thing too about Isarl is in that late game setup, what you usually have a situation is somebody else is on Mechatol that everybody else is worried about, mm-hmm. and they sort of kick them off for you, leaving very little behind, which right, gives that's you even true, yeah. more of an opportunity yeah. strike to yeah. jump on it. Because it's like, hey, I've stalled everybody out. I've let all of you play Kingmaker or Kneecapper or whatever, and here comes Isarl. Mm-hmm. Very true. Very true. Wow. This was... Well, we talked we, about the whole game again in one episode. We, <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> I think we got to wrap it up there. And uh, I, I'm excited for some errata on this one because I think lots of people think about Mechatol in very different ways. Yeah. So I really encourage people to, to hit us up with their uh, other opinions on this Yeah, topic. don't be afraid. Uh, Push back. I know, there, I know there's going to be some people that come out and be like, Sardak Nor can do Mechatol yeah, or something yeah. like that. And paint that picture for us because yeah. maybe we're just, maybe we're not believing hard enough. Tell us. This is this is one of those, like, I feel like we have these episodes every once in a while where we're just kind of fishing for theories, basically. Yeah, I think so. This yeah. is a theory crafty episode. There's no, there is no right answer in this one because, right. because the, the idea that Mechatol Rex, the planet in the center of the map, has anything, like, reliable about it is... Yeah. Out the window. There's no every, way. Every game is such a series of random events, basically. Um, yeah. That, yeah. And rare things happen all the time. So, without any further ado, you can rate us on Apple Podcasts or iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. You can find us on Twitter at Space Cats Pod. You can find us on Facebook, Space Cats Peace Turtles. Uh, every week, we post, we post on the uh, Twilight Imperium subreddit. So, if you want to be a part of the errata, the the twilight imperium subreddit post is a great spot to get your feedback in you can find us on patreon this was a galactic council voted on episode so if you do five dollars a month you can be a part of the voting committee that decides what the topics of these episodes are there was a a heated debate between this and homebrew and uh the theory that two resources equals three influence so if you want to see one of those other topics you know find its episode later on down the road try to be a galactic counselor on our patreon yeah 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 you can also join our Discord and hang out and be a part of our conversations. Please get on our Discord this week so that you can join in on the pre errata for the Barony Aletnev episode. Yeah, get in get in your hot takes. I want calling all hot takes. I want them all. Um, <laughs> check out our Facebook. It's good. 
It's good. It's fine. It's fun. It's fancy. It's a Facebook. We uh, there's a subreddit for Twilight Imperium called R slash Twilight Imperium, <laughs> and we post there weekly. Are you just doing the rundown again, Hunter? Yep. You can check out our Patreon. <laughs> and we also have a Discord for fun conversations. Hey, also, you can rate us on your podcast app of choice, especially Apple Podcasts and someone, iTunes. Someone was listening to this like on their way to work or something and kind of like half listening to it. And you just freaked them out because they're like, wait, didn't they, <laughs> didn't just, they just do that? Didn't they just do that? I'm, whoa, 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 wait, I'm, wait. I was just tuning them out because the rundown is the part I tune out. But I really feel like they just did that. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, anyways, we should do the rundown real quick. So you can <laughs> rate us on your podcast app of choice, especially our Twitter and the subreddit <laughs> Twilight Imperium posts and discussions and check out our Discord and you can do, do benefits there. <laughs> Well, that about wraps this one up. If we're just going to do the rundown real quick, I got a Twitter for you, Space Cats Pod. Check that one out. Um, you can check out Hunter's Instagram called Hungry Hunty, where he uh, posts uh, plates of food after he's eaten all the food. So it's just dirty plates. Any uh, tags the restaurant? Check out, you should check out the podcast Dumb and Busted. I'm on there every single Wednesday and Friday, uh, just checking out what the ladies are up to. That's me, Matt Martin's on Dumb and Busted. Matt isn't the one on Dumb and Busted. I am on <laughs> Dumb and Busted. Um, but that about wraps it up for this episode. <laughs> oh, wait. No. I, oh, I know what we should do. Um, so, uh, well, this is how we end episodes of Dumb and Busted. That's all for this episode. Crime you later. Thank you for listening to Space Cats Peace Turtles. And thanks to Ben Prunty for the use of his music. You can find more at benpruntymusic.com and benprunty.bandcamp.com. Pax Magnifica, Bellum Gloriosum.